Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, and I'm a digital and traditional artist. Over the years, I've enjoyed using Rebel so much, and what I'd like to show you is how I create clouds for my landscape paintings. It's certainly easy to see the appeal of clouds. They are what you may call the philosophers of the sky, and they represent an ever-changing nature of life. They can be hard-edged or soft-edged, but what they must be is ethereal in nature. So before we get started, we want to open up our visual settings. And I'm going to do that by either selecting the shortcut F12 or simply selecting the visual settings on the layers panel. I'm going to set my preset to default and we're going to be using the oils and acrylics for this particular set and instead I want to bring my impasto depth down quite low to about 2. We also have nano pixel en enabled and if you're using the pro version of Rebel 5 or 6 you will have this option. Selecting the F12 key once more or simply selecting the visual settings to close the panel. Well, let's start by opening the brush creator, and that can be found on your that can be found directly here on the in this case I'm working in the in the express oils and right on the brush panel. I'll go ahead and select that and it'll open up. We'll close that for the time being. And we're going to be talking about stroke, shape and grain, and paint. The shape of the brush can convey soft edges, hard edges, or a combination of edges which contribute to the beauty of a cloud brush. So let's go ahead and click on the shape option here. And you'll notice in my particular library I have lots of custom shapes, but I also have all the default shapes as well. And for this particular brush, the round oil, we're just going to be using one of the default shapes within the image library to get started. But this is the important part. Keep in mind that when you create cloud brushes and think about the shape of clouds, they are made up of numerous shapes if you're to break that cloud down into segments or parts of the cloud. So we have edges that may appear harder against a very bright blue sky or soft edges that will fade and look very soft and ethereal next to uh, another cloud for example or more of a gray sky. So these are all the contributing factors that go into creating a really great cloud brush. When I click on the shape of the brush, you will notice that I have a variety of default and custom dabs within my library. And to get started, you will notice that my brush is set to the default shape and for this particular brush. But if I want to change it, I can choose from a number of options. And I can even apply more than one shape to a brush and change the associated grain with that brush. So let's go ahead and get started by selecting the shape and then talk about what the next step is in creating a great cloud brush. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ways that we can create a great cloud brush going forward here. Again, I'm on the current shape. Now this particular shape I'm just going to go ahead and go with and we'll see what happens with this brush. I create lots of different cloud brushes for different landscape paintings based upon the effect that I'm looking for. You know, I might be looking for very, very soft edge clouds or very strong thunderhead type clouds. So the dab that I choose will definitely contribute to the brush that I'm creating. In this case, let's just go ahead and start with the shape of this brush. And I'm going to come over to the grain setting and click on it. And it's going to open up the image library that includes the grains that I currently have 
or currently work with. And for this particular brush, I'm going to start off with just the plain grain. It's just a white, no texture involved in this grain at all, and that's the first grain that we're going to start with. Now, in terms of the sequence of this brush, I want to add more shape. I want to include more shapes. I want to include more grains. So what I'm going to do here is come down to this little option here called Add Shape and Grain and click on it to create my next shape and my next grain. So I'm going to again look over to my image library and uh, we're going to go, actually we'll start with a shape and we're going to change the shape of, the, of this dab. We're going to add an additional dab uh, to this particular uh, shape here of this cloud brush that we're developing. Now I have a lot of custom dabs here and um, I don't necessarily want to get you off track because I want you to understand that you can use default uh, images from your from your library to create these as well so you you don't necessarily have to use custom but it is fun to create custom dabs and use them for your uh, clouds as well. But in order of simplicity, we're going to go ahead and just create another dab here and we'll select this one called the Shape Round Noise. And we're going to come over to the grain setting now and choose something different in terms of grain. And you can see that I have a lot of default and I have a lot of custom images that I've added here as well. So for this one, I'm going to select this one called Grain 4 and I want to expand the size of the scale of this texture. So I'm going to select the texture properties which is located right below the thumbnail preview and I'm going to bring the scale up a little bit on that and I'm going to bring the contrast up high because I want lots of contrast going on with this particular um, with this particular brush I'm creating. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to add another brush shape. So I'm going to go back to my shape option here and click on Add Shape or Grain and I'm going to create something else here. And here's one that might be fun to explore called the Shape Splat. We'll go ahead and select that and we're going to come back over to our grain setting and again go back to our, our grain plane and select that. So you'll notice now that I have three grains, three shapes selected for this particular brush. And in the sequence option here, I can make these closer together, further apart in terms of the flow of that sequence. So the image sequence is set to how often that brush consisting of not only the shape and the grain repeats in the brush stroke and you can actually set this up quite high um, in terms of the actual sequence that you have uh, going here and what you'll want to do is open this little option here called the texture order and you can set it to sequential or you can set it to random and I like setting it to random in particular because it does allow you to uh, repeat the brush strokes from 1 to 100. And so for this one, we're just going to start off with something a little bit on the lower side. So we'll set it to 20 at this point. So when I come over and I'll pick a lighter color here and I'll bring the brush size up a little bit. And you can see that there's not really much happening with this brush. It, it's not very exciting. It, you know, really isn't, doesn't really look like a cloud brush to me, but there's lots more that we can do here to get this brush into uh, creating it so it does create this beautiful, beautiful cloud effect. So let's continue um, and working down on the shape and grain options here. And what we're going to do is just cycle through these now by using the next shape and grain. And you can see that we have three shapes and three grains selected for this particular brush. We have the random texture order selected and we have the image sequence at 20. So let's move down now to the shape options here. 
In terms of shape, uh, what we're going to do here is work on the angle and for this particular brush I think I'm just going to set the angle to zero but I am going to start exploring the angle jitter a bit and I'm only going to bring it up to three at this point but I can always go back and work further on this. Now depending upon the stylus you're using the rotation may come into play as well. In my particular um, case, I'm using, uh, I really like working with pen rotation. So I've set that to pen, pen rotation and I'm going to just leave it at that point, okay? And we're going to come down next to taking a look at the grain options that we have. Now, one of the things that's important here is that we want a certain amount of grain, but we don't want too much grain. So we'll start off by choosing just a few little options here. And what I'm going to first of all choose is this option called stretch. And I'm going to bring the stretch slider up a little bit at this point. And you'll see when we go to the next step what's going to happen with this brush stroke. I want grain smoothing off at this point. I may come back and change that, but at this point we're going to keep it off. I like the brush to start with a random start offset, so I want that brush texture to be random. And I'm going to uh, choose random start angle, angle jitter, and random splat offset. Okay, so right now these are the settings that we have with the shape and grain. We have three shapes, three grains. We have alpha blending set to normal. We have the sequence set to 20. Angle zero, angle jitter three, pen rotation, stretched, and then below that you can see the settings that I've incorporated. So the next option we're going to take a look at is the paint option. And this becomes important depending upon the brush that you're trying to, um, you know, the effect that you're trying to create with that particular cloud brush. So you may be looking more for a glazing brush, but in this case we're looking for the rendering option to be set to normal. And our paint blending mode, we have some wonderful options here, but at this point we're just going to choose default. We know that this is in, in the oils and acrylics. And uh, we have our paper strength set to 40, our paper texture contrast. Now this is an area that you can explore. If you find you're getting too much paper texture in the brush coming through that contrast and strength of the paper texture, then certainly can, you know, feel free to go in here and play with these options until you find something you want. Now we're going to go to the last option here called Stroke. And where this particular brush becomes really exciting, and this is the place where I really enjoy the creativity of being able to create brushes this way, is in this category here, this option called Stroke. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is start exploring some of these settings and we'll work from the top down to the bottom so there's no confusion. I always like bringing my max size up to 700 because I like to be able to have that in case I'm working on very large canvases, so I want that brush to be able to be maxed out. Now the next option is the size jitter, so this means that this brush is going to, uh, you know, appear in different sizes as the brush is laid down and it's going to create different sizes within that brush stroke. Okay, so that's important. And this one area you'll want to come back to and explore a little bit. The opacity jitter, uh, definitely you can play with this particular one. I tend to have a firm hand. Uh, with my stylus, so I like my pen pressure up higher. And this is another option here that we're going to take a look at is the spacing. Now the spacing becomes very integral to this, this brush because what happens here is it creates that individual brush stroke with a space between 
each stroke and this is the real key to creating beautiful cloud brushes okay so let's start off with a spacing of about 36 the next option we come down to is the jitter of that brush so how much do you want that brush dab moving as you create that brush stroke so let me just explore this for you you can see that there's not a lot of jitter in this particular brush uh, but if I want to create a little more spacing and a little more jitter within that brush I can bring this up now let me bring it up high so you can see just what happens with that brush so in terms of spacing you can see that we start to get a little more spacing within that brush and this may be exactly what you're looking for especially if you're working with uh, if you're trying to develop a, an accumulus type cloud a big beautiful um, soft edged cloud this would be something you'd want to play with so I'm going to bring mine down just a little bit because I think it's a little over the top but this is probably something uh, that I can continue to explore uh, based upon the effect that I'm looking for and you can see right away that this starts to create uh, a really effective cloud brush right away now one of the options here that um, you might want to explore also is the scatter so this would mean how much that brush is going to scatter around the canvas as I'm starting to work with it um, so we can see some different sizes coming in, some different scatter uh, within that brush. This is um, very soft pressure. And this is firm pressure. So you can see that we're getting a larger brush stroke. Okay, so let's bring the scatter down a little bit on that. And that looks about right. And let's take smudge off at this point and I want you to see the difference here now if I was looking for a brush that was very uh, hard-edged um, a brush that I was wanting to create maybe thunderheads with I would definitely re remove the smudge option here and I would also probably work a little bit with my spacing and my jitter and spacing jitter and uh, size jitter of that brush so I'll bring it down a little bit and I'm going to bring that up a little bit and this is just where you have to really explore the brush a little further and go a little further with it and see where it's working and where it's not now I love random edges so this is why I tend to use lots of grainy textures when I'm building the grain of the brush so this is an area you can definitely explore so this brush you can see has harder edges here let's go ahead and paint with very soft pressure but it's still accomplishing you know what I want here um, I'm going to bring the spacing jitter down and the spacing up a little bit. Yep, I think I'm going to bring that down. So it's just a matter of working and exploring until you get the brush basically working in the shape and the idea that you're trying to convey with that particular brush. So this may be a brush that would be more for thunderheads, that type of thing, where if I enable the smudge, you'll notice that the brush takes on a different attribute. It's softer edged and would be, um, you know, a brush that you would use for, you know, very soft edged clouds, you know, against a very, very pale sky, for example. and we'll take smudge off and you can see the difference and let's actually go with a little darker color here so you can see the contrast so this brush here would be more of that hard-edged brush and with smudge on 
you know, we're going to get a softer edged brush. Finally, we're going to go back to the paint option here and we're going to be taking a look at the paint mode. Okay, now this is something where, you know, it's depends on the way that you enjoy working, um, whether you like working directly from the panel and being able to choose size, opacity. But if I select, for example, paint and blend, I have the opportunity here to go in and adjust not only the paint of the brush and the pressure settings, but the blending of that brush. So if I want that brush to be very, very soft blending, a lot of times what I'll do is completely take these all the way off the top, drag it all the way to where the brush is blending at the maximum. Okay. You also have that opportunity to choose it directly from the Express Oils panel here. So we know that paint, paint and mix, paint and blend, simple blending and eraser is all available on this particular uh, panel. So this makes it nice to be able to just use shortcut keys to move between painting and blending. And in Rebel 6, the option of choosing the V key to blend or paint and back and forth by selecting the V key is another option that we have, uh, which is something that I think um, I definitely enjoy working with. It gives it me a very natural approach to, uh, especially when I'm using oils, and it gives me just that ability of going back and forth and back and forth. Now, I also like using the paint and blend mode for particularly clouds. And I'll start with a very light color here. And uh, the really wonderful part about working with this particular option here, paint and blend, is if I apply firm pressure on my stylus, I'm going to get lots of saturation in the brush, whereas soft pressure gives me that ability to go in and blend the edges. So this is the key to creating beautiful, beautiful cloud brushes. This is probably the control that I use more often than not, uh, especially when I'm developing clouds. Whether they're thunderheads or just soft ethereal clouds, uh, in the sky. Um, I want to be able to soften edges on one side based upon my light source and be able to add um, different sizes and pressure uh, by simply using pen pressure, which is to me a very traditional way of painting. So you can see here that um, just by creating and using some of our default brushes, we can create beautiful, beautiful cloud shapes uh, of all sizes. And uh, you know, you, if you find that you're, again, with this particular brush, that you want that brush to be more hard edged, the same applies here. This brush now, let's go ahead and remove that. This brush now, you can see, has harder edges as I put firm pressure on the brush, I'm going to get lots of hard edges. And with soft pressure, you can see that I can go in and create beautiful soft edges on this cloud and use it basically to define the cloud shape. Um, let's zoom in on this a little bit. And we'll just give it a nice big thunderhead look. And then soft pressure, and I can use that to blend the edges and bring some of the additional color from the canvas right into the brush, or right into the cloud.
And then if I wanted to go back to smudge, I could use that to, again, firm pressure and soft pressure to just blend. So this works nicely if you're trying to show those, the underside of a cloud. Um, I also like using just simply the blend option. And with firm pressure, you know I can, I'll give myself a smaller brush here. And with firm pressure, I can almost sculpt the shape of these clouds out. Go around this edge a little bit. So wherever I would want to have harder edges or softer edges, or if I'm looking to just to change the shape of that cloud, I can just carve right into it. And then with soft pressure, blend. With a larger brush, I can actually pull some of the shape. Let's go to take it off a smudge and use a harder brush here. I can actually just pull new shapes of clouds from the bottom. And again, soft pressure to blend and firmer pressure to just dig in and sculpt. So I hope you enjoy this. What I'd like to do is, in closing, um, if you like this brush, remember that you'll want to save it as a new brush preset if you're using one of your default brushes. And I'll go ahead and do that. And you'll notice that it is the same name. I'm going to change it. And I'm just going to call it Cloud Hard. Okay. And OK. Now, I want this brush to be my default brush. I don't plan on changing it at any point. So I'm going to save the brush uh, as a default and save. And then, of course, if you love using it, you can always copy it into your favorites. And if I go to my favorites, you can see that I have lots of uh, cloud brushes that I really enjoy using. One of my favorites is based on pastels, and a lot of it, you can see that this brush is very textured and includes different levels of jitter, the size jitter, the shape and the grain. You can see four different shapes and grains that I've used for this brush, and you can see the different shapes and grains that I've used. Um, I have it set to tiled in terms of the grain, and you can see that I have random start offset and random splat. So again, uh, feel free to really explore the different options you have with shape and grain as you start to develop different cloud brushes. And I think uh, what you're just, you, you know, you're just going to find that uh, working with these particular types of brushes and creating these is going to um, <laughs> you'll probably end up spending lots of time doing it because it is just so much fun and you can create some beautiful, beautiful effects uh, creating these brushes. Um, I might even say that, just in closing here, that watercolor brushes also come into play here. So for example, you can always create one of your favorite brushes in, say for example, the oils or pastels and copy that brush into watercolor and you have a beautiful watercolor brush that you can use for cloud paintings as well. And you can see how, I'll go ahead and dry that, but you can see how that watercolor enhances the shapes of your clouds and you can cre create some additional beautiful effects by using watercolor brushes and changing them in or changing any of your custom brushes that you've created for clouds and using them in their watercolor uh, brush category. Some beautiful, beautiful effects. 
So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Feel free to uh, reach out to me if you have any questions and um, I look forward uh, to seeing your work and feel free to share it and enjoy Rebel. Take care.